Welcome back to Sputnik. Not everyone gives both sides of a story like this, but we've always been different from the rest. We're joined now from Beijing by veteran writer, commentator, former banker, former politician in the United States of America, but now living and working in Beijing in our Tangan. A very great pleasure to see you, sir. Thanks for uh, joining us. The proximate reason for the discussion is the enormous kerfuffle that there has been in Britain over the last week uh, over Chinese influence buying in the British Parliament. Although they didn't seem to have purchased a very great deal of influence, but they did seem to spend a very great amount of money, uh, raising questions about how business savvy the whole thing was. Uh, but there are deeper reasons. Uh, China and Chinese people are on the receiving end of uh, some pretty brutal attack these days. In the West, on both sides of the Atlantic, a uh, Chinese woman pushed in front of a train in New York in, uh, in just the last uh, hours. And this uh, tremendous outpouring of hostility against China over the Barry Gardner affair. How does all that look from Beijing? Well, it looks like the product of a you know long-standing um, you know uh, attack campaign uh, against it. I mean, from Beijing's point of view, if you review uh, the newspapers on a daily basis, all the talk shows, it's China, 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 and uh, all of it's bad. I mean, it, it sounds uh, like China is the greatest evil on earth next to Russia, but you know it's one of these things where you know at some point the hyperbole uh, collapses. China's record. Uh, as a nation is uh, much better than those who criticize it. So at this at this point, uh, Beijing has little choice but to uh, be patient, uh, kick back occasionally, but kind of wait for the truth to win out, hopefully. In the financial news this very morning, uh, it was kind of smuggled out as a footnote that China's growth this year in these very difficult times uh, will be 8.1 percent, uh, 2 percent more than uh, than they budgeted uh, on. Uh, these two things cannot be separated, can they? The Chinese government is not given to the kind of hyperbole that you see from other nations where they predict something that they have no intention of achieving. Uh, they tend to be fairly conservative. They uh, deliberately said 6 percent to give themselves plenty of room. They knew that it would be a very, very difficult year. It exceeded expectations mostly because the, they were serving the rest of the world in terms of PPE, uh, putting out vaccines. Um, you know, they had fully functioning production capabilities, which were in dire need during these times when uh, other countries had not handled the pandemic particularly well and were in need of essential uh, goods and services. That's the paradox, isn't it? That uh, almost in inverse proportion, uh, hostility and and propaganda against China goes up and up and up, yet the number of countries in the world for whom China is the number one trading partner is at the same time going up and up and up. I, I happened to learn at the weekend uh, that every country in Latin America, from Mexico to Chile, uh, now has China as its number one trading partner. Uh, so the, China's long march continues. Well, it's not been a long march. I mean, China is not out there saying that you should copy the uh, Chinese system, and, and nor could it be copied, I think, in anywhere else. I mean, the Chinese had a unique situation. They've done well with it. I think that if there's any lesson that they're pushing out there, it's that every country has to look at, you know, whatever it has, whatever its particular strengths are, use its people, bring them together, and then work exceedingly hard for a long period of time to achieve what is necessary. Um, there is no dictating uh, what you should do, what values you should have, and things like this. And especially, they're not the ones who are, uh, you know, on the on the bad side of the hypocritical uh, triangle. Now, uh, in our, you are in Beijing, where, like, in a matter of a couple of weeks. Uh, the Beijing uh, Winter Olympics is going to take place. And a lot of noise has grown uh, over the past few weeks, uh, obviously boycotting direct flights, boycotting uh, athletes, everything, the whole, the whole, everything. Uh, so how is it, how is it going? Uh, the latest is that uh, China will not sell tickets for public uh, 
due to COVID uh, reasons. Is this a valid reason? Well, yes. I mean, the, China has a zero uh, pol COVID policy, which has kept their deaths at 5,000 in total for over the last two years. Uh, they believe very strongly that they should put the people first. And as a result, uh, they, that's what they're doing. In terms of the Olympics, they're being extra cautious. Uh, there, was one, um, uh, there was one case in Haidian, which is in Beijing, and they, they quickly went through. I was amazed. They sent out an itinerary of exactly where this chap had been, every place that they closed. Uh, it was quite amazing in their ability to do that. So yeah, they they can't. They have a situation where they have volunteers who are, uh, are already last week were isolated along with officials. Uh, they're trying to make sure that there is no danger to the public, and it is not worth having a pandemic spread uh, within the country simply because somebody wants to be there in person. Now going back uh, to the uh, Gardner affair, uh, China oftentimes, in fact, probably this. Uh, rubric is one of their most repeated uh, saws, that China does not interfere in the internal affairs of other countries. But how else would you describe spending the best part of three quarters of a million pounds in a parliamentary office in the House of Commons? I was a member of parliament for almost 30 years. Nobody ever spent 30 shillings in my office. <laughs> Uh, but uh, but uh, three quarters of a million pounds spent on the office of an obscure uh, and ultimately powerless Labour politician. Was this just a bad choice by China or are they doing this routinely? Well, George, you're, you're making a, a very uh, big assumption there, and that is that it is, in fact, true that she was funded by Beijing and they were pouring money into her coffers. If that, in fact, was the case... I think there would have been proof. I mean, this has been a public PR lynching. Uh, basically, they said, we have reason to suspect, uh, what is this, uh, quote, she's been engaged in political interference activities on behalf of the Chinese Communist Party, unquote. All right, where are the facts? Where are the, the monies? Yes, there are obviously funds given to this politician, but I mean, perhaps uh, I've lived in Britain uh, for about seven years, different periods in time, but I been longer in the United States. I, I'm not shocked by any amount of money that is being spent uh, in the ways. I, it appears to me, rather than buying influence, if, if she was in fact trying, and as you pointed out, was not very successful, she was probably buying access. She wanted somebody who would uh, allow her into the corridors of power so she could snap pictures and show them to her Chinese clients, who would be very, very impressed with pictures of Xi Jinping, Theresa May, all of these people. This is how you generate business. My pictures were with, uh, with uh, uh, Fidel Castro and Saddam Hussein and uh, Bashar <laughs> al-Assad. That's probably why I never raised any uh, money. Uh, the, the, it is common in the United States, but it isn't common in Britain. At least we like to think uh, that it isn't. Uh, but it's also fair to really, point out... Really, George? <laughs> well, may, maybe I'm not so sure. I was once sure uh, that uh, money... Everything was on a smaller scale, put it that way. Yes. In the Cold War, a, a member of parliament could be suborned by the KGB for a bottle of good vodka and a fur coat for the wife <laughs> and caviar at Christmas and a hamper. Uh, but this kind of level of uh, funding is, is, I think, new... To Britain. Theresa May, the British Prime Minister, gave this woman a gong, and uh, David Cameron uh, traveled around with her, uh, and lots of pictures of her whispering uh, in his ear. But I take your point. Uh, there's no actual evidence being produced that the Chinese government gave her this money to give on into the British uh, political process, and we're being told no criminal offense has been committed by either party, either the MP or Ms. Lee, in which case you wonder what the difference is between her activity and the activity of other foreign powers, uh, uh, Israel, America, or many other foreign powers are very active 
in the British Parliament. And more successful. And more successful. <laughs> Well, George, let's not put too fine a point on it. Ian Duncan Smith, who was absolutely outraged, you know, he's he's saying it. Well, he also earns forty five thousand pounds in, you know, advising some medical uh, groups or something like this. I mean, David Davis, fifty thousand pounds representing two German companies. Uh, tell me again how this is all there and, and all about 200 MPs have declared that they earned something uh, from de minimis 50 pounds all the way up to a couple hundred thousand. Um, yeah, I, I don't think money is very far from it. I, I, I remember um, going to an elite uh, private school and uh, sitting in a club listening to some very odd fellows who turned out to be MPs talking about the uh, their Piccadillys and their desires for very expensive uh, wines, champagnes, and cognac at uh, exclusive parties. I don't think that was paid for out of their, um, let us say, their pockets. There's a kind of a glad handing that goes around in terms of uh, politics, and politicians are always very, very happy, at least those who think that their, <laughs> their political future is necessary for everybody. Uh, to, you know, turn a blind eye. I mean, how else can you explain what happened? I mean, if she was doing this, and if she, this was a, you know, as I keep coming back, if this was a, you know, big conspiracy, boy, did it fail, as you have said. <laughs> so more likely, this is just her pursuing her business and uh, a gullible bunch of <laughs> MPs going along with it. Thank you very much indeed, sir, for joining us from Beijing on board the Sputnik. Absolute pleasure, George. Really, uh, thank you for putting up with me. I look forward to doing this again sometime.